Maybe standard format's not your thing. Maybe expanded is not your thing. Maybe gym leader challenge isn't your thing either. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I have an idea for you. It is called the Q format. Now, what is the Q format? Well, I'm going to leave a description uh, link in the description down below to explain that further. But with all that for ado, today, guys, we're going to be breaking down my list. But first of all, we are using Dragon Shield Elliptic Sleeves. I'll put a photo up wherever. And huge thank you to my professor at Blasco for letting me do this. This project costed about $260. Yeah, $260. Sleeves alone cost $60, by the way. And 277 cards had to be worked. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Let's get right to it. Alright, so the first Pokemon we are talking about today is Mimikyu. Now, Mimikyu is a Psychic type, 70 hit point basic Pokemon. Has two attacks, Proplex for a Psychic uh, Energy. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. Basically, it would confuse the Pokemon, which means the opponent would have to flip in order to attack. And then the second attack is Worst Gift for Psychic and Colorist uh, 10 times. Uh, and the amount of damage counters on all your opponent's Pokemon. So basically, what you could do is basically just soften up Pokemon on your opponent's side of the field, boss around, and then start taking huge one-hit KOs. That would be a strategy I would use. And for your information, there's six Mimikyu in the cube. Mimikyu. Can't stress enough on how much recovery is important to these kinds of cubes. Because 40 card decks can deck out easily, so that is why I have brought a friend called Oranguru. Now, Oranguru is banned in a lot of formats uh, for a good reason, but he is a basic type with 100 uh, colors type, basic 120 hit points. But his two attacks will explain why. Resource management, put four colors. Put three cards from your discard pile on the bottom of your deck in or any order. This is probably why he was banned in the first place, because this attack literally could repeat the most devastating combos and expanded. But then Profound Knowledge for three colors energy 60, your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. I would more use him for the recovering resource management, move, but he's pretty unique as well. Uh, eight of them are in this cube as a whole. Pretty cool as it may stand. For my next Pokemon in my cube, I have went with a giraffe Pokemon known as Draperig, and he is very good for psychic type decks that will be built in this kind of cube. Uh, his t he is a basic with 90 hit points, and then two attacks for two colors energy, tackle for 20 damage, for three colors energy, side spite for 50 damage. Plus, if this Pokemon has any psychic energy attached to it, this attack does three more damage. Pretty good if I were to be honest, and there are five of them in this list. For my next Pokemon I use in this cube, it is known as Dredigon. So Dredigon is a basic attacker with 100 hit points, but he has an ability. Now, abilities are a little risky for these kinds of players that are playing these cubes, but his ability is pretty simple. A rough skin, if this Pokemon is your active Pokemon and is hit damaged by an opponent's attack, even if this Pokemon is knocked out, put two damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. Now there is a Pokemon later we will discuss that kind of feeds off his ability, but then his sec his attack for three colors energy clutch 60 
damage. This opponent, the defending Pokemon cannot retreat during your opponent's next turn. So basically, you can literally just keep stalling opponent's Pokemon in the active as long as possible. So, very unique. And there are nine of them in this cube. For my next Pokemon in my Pokemon Cube, I wanted to find a Pokemon that could search out basics easily with no problems. And the selection I have made is Drampa. Drampa has 120 hit points and a call for family attack for a colors energy. Search your deck for two basic Pokemon and put them onto your bench afterwards and then shuffle your deck. Very good for quick setup decks and then Spiral Rush for Double colors energy, two colors energy, 30 plus, flip a coin until you get tails. This attack does 30 more damage for each head. Very good. I mean, you could literally set them up in one go with a double colors energy. Very useful. And there are nine in the deck, the cube. meat and potatoes of this deck we are looking at one of my favorite star pokemon of all time primarina this pokemon is a beast of herself is a stage two has 150 hit points and for a water and colors disarming voice 30 damage your opponent's active pokemon is now confused and then for two water energies and one colors sparking are uh, 100 damage, heal 30 damage from this Pokemon. Now, this is a very cool card as well. I mean, you've seen some cards say, hey, you're confused, you're confused, you're confused. But it's pretty cool and unique. We do run four of these in the deck. The cube. Now, there's a second version of this card of Primarina in the deck, and we're going to take a look at her right now. So, Primarina has 150 hit points and is a stage 2, but her ability reads Harmonics. Whenever you attach an energy card from your hand to one of your Pokemon, except with an attack, ability, or trainer card, Attach up to two energies instead of one. So basically, you can only attach one energy per turn. But this allows you to attach two per turn, which is pretty insane. And then for a colorless and two, uh, uh, for water and two colorless energy, Hypnosplash, 80 damage. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now asleep. Very useful as itself. And there are five in the cube. Alright, so with stage 2s, you really need a lot of stage 1s, or do you really need those? Let's look at one of the stage 1s we have in this queue, which is Brion. Brion has 90 hit points as a stage 2, a water and a colorless energy, wave splash for 30 damage, and then disarming voice for a 2 water and a colors cost 50 damage, your opponent's Pokemon is now confused. There's a lot of confused based attacks for this cube, and I feel like you can always evolve. Now, I will get to it later, but there are only six of them in the deck or cube currently. You can't play the stage 2 or the stage 1 without the basic. And here is the first basic we are talking about of the stage 2, which is Poplio with a 70 hit point target and 2 attacks. Pound for water energy does 10 and then a water energy and colors cost water gun for 20 damage. Pretty simple, but you're really never going to use this as your main attacker. I do run 
nine of these fellas in the queue. The next Pokemon we are talking about teams up with Drygon and his ability. It is Alolan Sandslash, a stage 1 with 120 hit points, but this guy has so much on him. For 0 energy, Spike Armor does 30 damage, but during your next opponent's turn, if this Pokemon is damaged, and even if it's knocked out, you place 6 damage counters on your opponent's active. And then for three energies, which is water and two colors, Frost Breath does 90 damage. So basically, you could say, hey, if you hit me, you're going to get hit back harder than ever, for sure. I do run nine of, no, not nine of these, seven of these in my queue. Of course, we can't forget probably one of the cutest versions of San Shrew is the Alolan form, in my opinion, that is. But let's look at what he does. Alolan San Shrew has 60 hit points, is a basic, and his first attack is for free. Defensive curl, flip a coin if heads prevent all damage done to this Pokemon during your next opponent's turn. And then Ice Ball for three energies, which is a water and two colors cost. Ice Ball for 30 damage. Not bad. You wouldn't be attacking with this guy unless you wanted to protect yourself no matter what. I do run seven of these in the cube. So far, we've covered one of the mascot Pokemon of this cube, and now we're going to hit upon the second one, which, honestly, Gardevoir is the main engine behind this cube that makes it work. 140 hit points in a stage 2, Gardevoir has an ability, Shining Arcane Eye. Once you return, you may look at the top two cards of your deck and attach as many basic psychic er basic energy oh not just psychic energy any energy and attach them to your pokemon any way you like and then put the other cards in your hand very good i thought it was only for psychic energies but no i was wrong but brainwave for three colors energy 60 plus damage and then 30 more for each Psychic Energy attached to this Pokemon. Very good as well. And I run 5 in this cube. Permarina had two versions of her card in the cube. Gardevoir has two versions of the cube, and this one is very different to the last. We have Gardevoir, stage 2, 150 hit points. With the ability Refinement, you must discard a card from your hand. In order to use this ability, once in your turn, you may draw two cards, and then Magical Shot for a Psychic in Colors, 120. Very good card, can definitely draw you right through your deck whenever you needed it. We do run five of these in the cube. Now there's only one way to get Garvor into play. Well, unless you're doing it another way, which involves Corellia. Now Corellia is very good like Garvor, the last Garvor we covered. So Corellia is a stage one with 80 hit points, but she's got the same ability as the last Garvor, which is Refinement. You must discard a card from your hand in order to use this ability. Once during your turn, you may draw two cards, and then slap for Psychic and Colorist is does 30 damage. I do run eight of these in the cube because they're very useful. And 
before we move on, we must cover the basic Pokemon of Gardevoir, which is Ralts. Now, Ralts is a very good Pokemon in this cube, and I'll explain why. Ralts, 60 hit points, basic, and then for Psychic Energy, Memory Skip, 10 damage. But wait, there's more. Choose one of your opponent's Pokemon, active Pokemon, attacks, and during your opponent's next turn, this Pokemon can't use that attack. So basically, if your opponent is slapping you with a really hard move and you can't respond, you're basically going to be like, hey, you can't use that attack next turn, and it will mess them up. I do run nine of these in the cube. Now we're getting into the color side of my cube, and we're going to start off with Pidgeot. 130 hit points, a stage 2, and a total wreck house, if I'm going to be honest. Whirlwind for double colors energy, 60 damage. Your opponent switches one of their active Pokemon with one of their bench ones. And then, uh, bench Pokemon, I meant to say. For three colors energy, Spin Storm, your opponent puts their active Pokemon in all cards, attach it into their, uh, attached into their hands. This could literally disrupt any stage 2 your opponent is trying to set up. Very useful as well. I do run 6 of these in the queue. Now maybe you're a player that doesn't like discarding their cards to draw cards. Maybe you want to go simplified and go with a Pidgeotto. Pidgeotto has 60 hit points, is a stage 1, and has a very good ability that kind of is better than Corellia's and Gardevoir's. Air Mail is an ability. Once in your turn, before you attack, you may look at the top two cards of your deck and put them one of them into your hand and then put the other card on your deck, uh, on the bottom of your deck. Very useful, contains resources very well. And then Gust for 30 damage for double colors. Very useful in a way. And then I run six of these in the queue. And finally... The last basic of the three Pokemon we are having as the main stars of this cube. We are talking about Pidgey. Now, Pidgey is a basic Pokemon with 60 hit points with one attack. And that's probably not the best. Four colors, energy, quick attack, 10 damage. Plus, if flip a coin, if heads, this attack does 10 more damage. I mean, I couldn't really see you attacking with this Pokemon or anything like that. But still, you need it to get Pidgeot into play. And I do run 9 of these in my queue. Now, if there was ever a way to punish someone for not drafting correctly in this cube, this Pokemon would be the way. This is Glaceon, a stage 1 Pokemon with 110 hit points. But the first attack is going to send people home pretty soon if they don't draft the basic. Frost Wall for a single water energy, 30 damage. During your next opponent's, uh, next opponent's next turn, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon from evolution Pokemon. And then for two water and a colors, Ice Blast for 120. This literally could punish opponents for not drafting basic Pokemon like they're supposed to. I do run five of these in the deck. If things didn't look worse enough for your opponent, you could always use Sylveon to make their lives more miserable. Sylveon is a stage 1 with 110 hit points and 2 attacks. Timeout kick for a psychic energy, 30 damage, and then you may put an energy attached to one of your opponent. 
your opponent's active Pokemon into their hand. And then Sympathy Whip for a Psychic and Double Colors cost does 70, and then if you play a support during your turn, this attack does 70 more damage. So it could literally let, say, hey, if you played this support, you would do extra damage. Really useful in a way. I do run five of these in my deck. So maybe you're asking, Rashi Mine, how do I get Glaceon or Sylveon into play? Well, the answer lies in the fact that there is an Eevee out there that allows you to automatically spring one of those into play. It's Eevee, basic Pokemon with 60 hit points, energy evolution. When you attach an er basic energy from this Pokemon to your hand during your turn, you may search your deck for the card that evolves from that Pokemon that is the same type of energy you just attached. Put this Pokemon into play and evolve it, and then shuffle your deck. And then quick draw for a color's energy. Flip a coin if heads, then draw a card. Not bad as well. We do run 10 Eevees in this cube. So, one thing about this cube is you probably noticed a lot of these Pokemon only have a 1 or 2 retreat cost, and that's because this Pokemon, Dodrio, takes full advantage of that. Dodri Dodrio is a stage 1 with 90 hit points and an ability retreat aid. As long as this Pokemon is on your bench, your opponent active Pokemon, your active Pokemon retreat cost is 2 less. And then Fury Attack for 3 energies, 40 times, and then flip coin, flip 3 coins, this attack does 40 damage, times the amount of heads. Very useful as well. And we do run 5 of these. And finally, for the last Pokemon we are covering... For the Pokemon section of my cube, we are talking about Do 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 Duo. Basically, this Pokemon is how you get Dodrio into play. Basic Pokemon with 60 hit points and two attacks. Double stab for a color's energy 10 times. Flip two coins. This attack does 10 more damage for each amount of heads. And then Do Duo Delivery, draw two cards for two energies. We do run five of those in the deck. I mean, cute. And that will do it for the Pokemon side of things. Let's dive right into the support side of things. Roll that. Alright, now that we've looked at the Pokemon side of the cube, we're going to look at the support side of the cube. Starting off with my favorite, N. We're going to start off this support review with one of the most disruptive supporters there ever was in the TCG era. And that is the supporter N. N is a very... Two side knife. It can hit your opponent hard or backfire and really mess your game up. N reads each player shuffles his or her hand into his or her deck. Then each player draws a prize card off of his or her remaining prize card. So basically, what you would do is if you had two prize cards left, you would draw two cards. Um, and this is a very really good way to really just punish your opponent for bad deck building, but it also can bite you in the process. Uh, we run, or I run, I should say, 14 N in this deck, uh, cube. Now, 
Now, unlike N, there is a way to draw more cards if one of your Pokemon does get knocked out, and that is known as Cynthia's Ambition. Draw cards until you have five cards in your hand. That is, if your Pokemon doesn't get knocked out. If any of your Pokemon are knocked out during your opponent's last turn, draw until you have eight cards in your hand. So basically, if you only have like three cards, and you basically have one of your Pokemon get knocked out, you basically say, hey, I'll draw five cards off of the support. Very good, and honestly, a good way just to fill your hand back up when you're getting end to low numbers. I do run 12 of these in the cube. Kind of weird to be talking about the support right now since we haven't introduced the items yet, but we might as well hit this trainer up beforehand. We have Bill's Analysis. Now, this is a uh, Skyla kind of supporter, but you only get to look at a certain amount of cards. So let's get right into it. Bill's Analysis, what does he do? Look at the top seven cards of your deck. You may reveal up to two trainer cards you find there and put them into your hand, shuffle the rest of the cards back into their deck. So basically, you only look at the top seven cards, but you have a chance to find any trainer in the book. And if you built your deck correctly with a whole bunch of trainers, you are should be striking gold with this support. I do run 14 Bills Analysis. A little overkill, but it works all the time. Now, if there was only a way to disrupt your opponent's setup and actually knock out a Pokemon that they are trying to set up hard as ever before, there is an answer. We have Cyber's Boss's Orders. Basically, this supporter is very simple to play. You switch your one of your opponent's active Pokemon with one of their benched Pokemon, or active Pokemon with one of their benched Pokemon. Either way, wording. <laughs> it's a little hard. And basically what you could do is say, hey, I want boss that Pokemon up, and you basically switch it, and you can just one-hit KO. Now, boss is limited in this format. I only am running eight with the expectation that one player will each get a boss. But if you play greedy, you might get more. As we all know, colors types do exist in this deck, and we're trying to find a way to search them out successfully. And we have one nine. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing her name, but this card is very good. What does she do? Search your deck for three colors Pokemon, reveal them, and put them into your hand, shuffle your deck house afterwards. So if you're playing the Pidgey, Pidgeotto, Pidgeot line, this is a very helpful card to get all your cards out at one go. I do run 10 of her in this cube. Now we're going to look at one of the simple supporters in TCG history known as Skyla. Skyla is a basically a say, hey, guarantee any trainer that you want out of your deck. Uh, search your deck for a trainer card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, and fool your deck afterwards. Now basically, if you're playing a stage 2 deck with a lot of rare candy, which we'll cover a little later down the line, basically this card is your best friend. I run 14 Skyla in the cube. We are talking about a supporter that will be always missed in standard format because it was so consistent and so dominant, and that is Cynthia from Ultra Prism. Shuffle your hand into your deck and then draw six cards. This is probably one of the simple cards of ever before. Like, if you had a dead hand, you just shuffle these cards back in the deck. The only risk with Cynthia is you would draw cards that you don't want to see, so... Always a dangerous threat. Now, I run 16 Cynthia's. 
and probably <laughs> this is my highest count of the queue for sure. In a limited format, recovering key supports is always a good thing. And we have Cynthia and Caitlyn for that job. Cynthia and Caitlyn is a tag team supporter, so that means you have to follow two steps. Put a supporter from your discard pile into your hand. You can't choose Cynthia and Caitlyn or a card you discarded with the effect of this card. When you play this card, you may discard another card from your hand if you do draw three. So it's basically a... Hey, versus Seeker, um, a discard card, just like, just discard a card, and then you draw three cards. So it's basically a versus Seeker, Quick Ball, and uh, uh, Sharon all in one go. So that's pretty unique as well. I do run 14 of these in the cube. And that will do it for the supporter side of things. So let's move on to the item category. Roll it. Alright, we've hit up the Pokemon side of the cube, the supporter side of the cube, and now we're going to the item side. Starting off with Professor's Letter. One thing a rookie player will tell you from the TCG card game is it's all about playing energies. And that's not always the case, but searching for energy, that's a different meaning. This is Professor's Letter. Search your deck for two basic energy cards and reveal them and put them into your hand. Shuffle your deck as afterwards. So basically, this is a way you could say, hey, I need a water or psychic energy uh, into your hand and then attach them. So basically, this is a free uh, search at option for your uh, deck. Very useful as well. And I run eight of these in the cube. Now we're going to look at one of the most confusing trainer cards you ever will see in your life, and that is known as Rare Candy. This is a mouthful to read, so hang on tight. Choose one of your basic Pokemon in play. If you have the Stage 2 in your hand that evolves from that Pokemon, put that card into on the basic Pokemon to evolve it. You cannot use this card during your first turn or when the basic Pokemon that was just put into play this turn. So basically, if you have, let's say, a Ralt, and you have the Gardevoir in your hand, you can spring the... Uh, yeah, you can spring the Gardevoir right into play instantly without any cost other than just playing this card. Very useful. And I do run 12 of these in the cube. Maybe you're not a person that likes to retreat their Pokemon and lose a bunch of energy in the process. Well, I have an answer for you. It is known as Switch. Switch. Just switch your active Pokemon when your bench wants. This is, may seem like the simplest and dullest card in the queue, but in times of need, if you get Pokemon stuck in the active and you can't attach energy per turn to it, then this is your gateway to safety. I run 10 switch in the cube. Now maybe you do not have Cynthia and Caitlyn in your hand at the time you want her the most. We have a second backup option, which is Pelpad. Shuffle your two support cards from your discard pile into your 
deck. This is one of my favorite cards. It's a better versus seeker because you recover more cards, but however, they don't go into your hand. And plus, I only expect players to play one of this in their deck because honestly, more than one is going to clog up your deck the most. I play eight of these in my queue. We play Palpad to recover supporters, but what about Pokemon and energies? Well, we have Ordinary Rod. Now, Ordinary Rod, you can do one or both. You can choose one or choose both. Shuffle up to two Pokemon from your discard pile into your deck, and then shuffle two energy, basic energy cards from your discard pile into your deck. Very good. So basically, if you are losing a lot of Pokemon, you can shuffle a bunch of Pokemon back into your deck. Only two at a time, though. Or, energy, you can only shuffle up to two in your deck. Or you can shuffle up to four cards. Two energy, two Pokemon. Pretty simple. I run eight of these in my cube. If there was ever a way to save energy from a knocked out Pokemon, this would be the way. Called XP Share. XP Share. Whenever your opponent's active Pokemon is not up by damage from an attack from your opponent's Pokemon, you may move an er basic energy from the Pokemon that was knocked out to this Pokemon that was this card is attached to. Damage, not effects. Okay, poison, burn. Those things don't count. So. You better just hope your opponent does not have any way to poison or burn, which I don't think any Pokemon have a method of doing that. So, you're in luck. I run 10 of these in the cube. We're about to look at one of the best bowl searching cards in ever every format that ever existed, known as Ultra Ball. Now, Ultra Ball reads discard two cards from your hand. If you cannot discard two cards, you cannot play this card. Search your deck for a Pokemon, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Shuffle your deck afterwards. So basically, if there are cards in your hand that you don't want to see, you just shuffle, you just toss them aside and say, hey, I don't want to see that card anymore. I do run 14 Ultra Balls in the cube. Crazy amount. For such a good card. Now while building this cube, I was planning on having Nest Ball in my cube, but unfortunately due to the cost of Nest Ball right now, it's quite expensive when I was building this cube, not before Scarlet and Violet released. But the replacement is not that bad. It's Pokemon Communication. Reveal a Pokemon from your hand and put it into your deck. If you do, search your deck for a Pokemon and reveal it and put it in your hand and then shuffle your deck. So basically this is like, hey, I'll exchange this Pokemon in for this Pokemon. So it's very useful in a way. I run 14 of these in the cube. Maybe you are a player that likes more dig in their deck. Well, this card may thrill you the most. It is Acro Bike. So look at the top two cards of your deck and put one of them into your hand and discard the other. So basically, what this would do is you look at the top two, and if you don't, if you like one but don't like the other, just toss it into the discard pile. This could deck you out though, so do be careful of that. I run 10 of these in the cube. Well, I think that will do it for now, and we are going to move on to the special energy category, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what energies really do come in this cube. Roll it.
All right, so now that we've really discussed about the Pokemon trainer as, as supporters and items, now we're going to talk a little about the energy. Now, there are no energies in the cube, and you may be like, well, what's up with that? Well, it's not on purpose. So basically, what the cube organizer is supposed to do is provide basic energy for you, but we still do have energy in the cube. We have nine double colors energy, and this is very good because there are a lot of Pokemon that have a lot of double colors use. However, that's not all. So basically, my professor provided me with a whole bunch of water energy and psychic, but that makes more sense because uh, we have a bunch of psychic and colors attacks, uh, water attacks, I meant. So, I think that will wrap it up for the cube analytics, and I'm going to hand it back over to Camera Rushy Mind so you, he can discuss more things. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you guys later. Alligators, peace. Well, for this view only. <laughs> well, that will do it for today's video. Big thanks once again to my professor at Alaska League, Professor Libby, and hopefully we can actually have some fun with this cube. Now, let me know what you guys think of this cube. What would you change? What would you improve? Now, do keep this in mind that this cube is more built for rookie players, not the advanced experienced players. So, hopefully, you guys had a great time watching this video. I'll see you guys later, out here. Peace.